So I have a complicated relationship with rabies. <laughs> and I'm trying to trace the source of this uh, complicated relationship. And the best I came up with was my childhood. Because my father instilled in me an almost irrational anxiety about all animals. <laughs> Domesticated, wild, nothing spared him. Whereas neighborhood kids in my neighborhood, you'd go into their house and look on their coffee table and their parents would have copies of Time Magazine or Newsweek. My parents had copies of Old Yeller in the house. <laughs> they were convinced that all the dogs in the neighborhood, including the Golden Retrievers, had rabies. And my father had these sayings that still stick with me today, like this one, beware of all things with wings. Okay, right. Okay. I mean, all things with wings? All, I mean, is that a little hyperbolic? You know? But that will make sense to you down the road. When I was 22 years old, I accepted an assignment teaching and volunteering in a wonderful city named Tacna, Peru, that was in the Atacama Desert on the border of Peru and Chile. And at the time, I had never heard of Tacna, Peru, like most of you probably haven't. So I picked up, and I'm not sure if we even have these today, a Lonely Planet. You remember the Lonely Planet? Yeah, there you go, big Lonely Planet fan back there. Uh, <laughs> So I picked up the Lonely Planet, and I, I went to the Takna section, and there were only two sentences. The, the first sentence was, don't get off the bus here. And, and the second sentence was, ever. Um, but of course I did, and I had two of the most vibrant, beautiful years of my life down there. I worked at a center called the Center for the Working Child, and it was founded by this amazing man named Jeff Thielman about 30 years ago, who was a teacher who realized that there were tens of thousands of street kids that didn't have educational services, that didn't have health services, and so on and so forth. And so I was welcomed into this great volunteer network, and I lived with two people for the entirety of my two years. Their names are Scooter and Teresa, and they factor into this story too. About six months into my tenure of living and working in Tacna, Peru, working at the Center for the Working Child and living with Scooter and Teresa, um, the kids who are wonderful, beautiful, smart, thriving, but also fabulous. I mean, they told stories that didn't make any sense. And this one particular day, about six months in, they told us a story about how there were cows running through the middle of the streets of Tacna, Peru. Now, as I told you, it's not a particularly agricultural city. It's sort of high desert. And uh, it struck us as odd because we had never seen any cows running through the streets of Tacna, Peru. Lo and behold, the next day, the story grew even more. Not only were the cows running through the streets, but they were now foaming at the mouths and trying to escape from water. And uh, this was a topic that we discussed over dinner. Um, thought nothing of it, like we didn't think much of their other wonderful stories. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that my roommates, Scooter and Teresa, everything at this time, totally platonic, okay? So at about three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and something was breathing into my mouth. And, and I felt a gentle scratch on my cheek. And my initial thought was, which one of my roommates, platonic roommates, is trying to kiss me? <laughs> but, but it was neither Scooter nor Teresa. It was a big, disgusting, beady-eyed bat. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, there we are. Um, yeah, yeah. So I grabbed the bat, like any normal person would, and tried to throw it off of my face, and it bit my hand. Oh. I decided I needed some help, so I went to the back of the house and I tried to wake up my roommates. I first went to Scooter's room, and this guy slept through an earthquake, so it was a pretty bad idea for me to try to wake him up because it, it didn't work. So I went into Teresa's room, and, I, and she said, I think I heard you scream, do you need help? And I said, yes, and she went <laughs> back to bed. Now, <laughs> Memory's a funny thing because I talked to her about this story last week and I said, we're really, really close and we have kids the same age 
She just moved back to Boston from Spain. It's probably more information than you needed, but I said, you know, Teresa, what are, what's your memory of what happened the next morning? Because mine was I courageously went into the room to look for the bat. It wasn't there, and I went back to sleep because I'm so tough. And her memory was she found me in the living room, cowering underneath my sleeping bag, accusing her of having abandoned me. So, <laughs> Um, like any uh, good friend, we got on the phone with the coordinator of the volunteer program in Washington, D.C., and said, you know, what should we do? Jeff's been bitten by a bat, and he said, get to a hospital immediately. I had uh, some fears of the local hospital, Takna being <laughs> uh, a third world city at best, although beautiful, and a couple months into my tenure down there, a good friend of mine died of tuberculosis, a very treatable disease and I had to identify her body at the morgue at the hospital. Just I wasn't really happy about going there, but I sucked it up because I didn't know if the bat was rabid and I heard the stories from the kids. So Teresa took me to the hospital and um, everyone was kind of huddled around and at this point the rumor of Batman had spread to the kids at the workings. You know. <laughs> By the way, same in Spanish and in English, Batman. Um, the hospital unfortunately was uh, out of the vaccine, so I did the next best rational thing. I went to the only other place in town that had the rabies vaccine, which was the local vet clinic. <laughs> next best choice, right? Um, and I'm not talking about a vet clinic like in Anchorage where you know, your dog needs your teeth brush or there's like your, your, ca <laughs> your, 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 your cat needs her nails clipped. Um, I'm talking about four farmers with skinny cows and me, at the time, like a beady-eyed, crazy dude who potentially has rabies. Like, that was, <laughs> th that was the clientele. And, um, you know, I I'm sure everyone here has heard it. There was an article in the ADN the other day about Alaska has 12 species of bats. And there was a biologist from Fish and Game who said that um, bats are unfairly persecuted. I I and I take issue with that. It's, it's, <laughs> Because at the time, I was already in my mind uh, associating myself with the symptoms of rabies, like anxiousness and sleeplessness. And so for two weeks, every third day, I went to the vet clinic to get a shot in my stomach that was about eight inches long. Truly really disgusting, right? And every third day, more and more kids who I worked with, their families were coming down to the city from places like Puno on the edge of Lake, Lake Titicaca. And it's like a harrowing 12-hour ride to get to Takna from this village. And like thousands of people were showing up at the walls of the vet clinic to see me uh, come out and lift up my shirt so they could see all these golf ball-sized uh, lumps on my body. Um, I'm probably, I don't have the Vic Fisher exception, do I? Did I wrap this up? Okay. <laughs> That's either like a tribute to Vic Fisher or get off the stage. Um, I'll be a minute. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I, bought myself, I think I bought myself a minute. I can talk about my daughters because of the um, possible slight. So, uh, no, no, and I'll get there too. So, so Teresa, right, my good friend, and we still keep in touch when we have kids the same age, and uh, we, we were talking about the story the other day, and she said, okay, what are the milestones in your, your girls' lives? And I said, well, Bridget, my two-year-old, said she can now say porcupine because our dog got over the fear of dogs. The, my, our dog was hit by, quilled by a porcupine, a Kincaid, so she now says porcupine, and Teresa said, well, that's great. My daughter, Lucia, she says porcupine too, but her favorite word is murcielago, which is bat in Spanish. Um, anyway, I'll wrap this up by saying uh, there are many things in my life, many times in my life where I haven't followed the advice of my parents, but the one thing that still holds true to this day is I should have been aware, should have been afraid of all things with wings. Thank you.